surely I'm anabolic now. Break the cycle, Morty. Rise above. Focus on science. I've been writing about these ingredients for over a decade and their effectiveness from taken together. It's based on the research. It's based on the real anecdotal data that I've seen in the gym. You know what, mate? What is partly glorious about this is Jim's research in the gym. And just to give you perspective, that would be like a surgeon giving information based on his experience playing the board game operation. And funnily enough, Jim's own research that he did in the gym differs to what real research says about glutamine for muscle growth and recovery. You know, real research with subjects and methodologies, measurement tools, a discussion of limitations, peer review, etc. A PhD giving you information based on his research in the gym. His opinion, the lowest form of, of scientific evidence, hashtag anecdotal. Anecdotal data that I've seen in the gym. My research in the gym tells me people look at me weirdly. And so welcome to Naughty Sports Science. I am your host, James Spectacles. And I do not have a face for Instagram. And I am on a bit of a supplement roll right now because the shenanigans that are going on in the supplement industry for sure have to be addressed. And I'm going to use this channel and the growth of this channel to give balance to some of these important issues. And so I'm not shackled by the constraints of some sort of supplement sponsorship. And I do have more in-depth videos, for example, on branch chain amino acids that you can look at and L-carnitine for fat loss. Some of the sub supplements I will touch upon in this video and I've linked them below. So please, if you want greater depth and context as to why I'm saying these things, watch my other videos. For example, the Cali Muscle Aminos video. Oh, I enjoyed that one. And so if you have a look at his product, these statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, nor by anyone who understands metabolism. The key is in the delivery, Cali. And so you can kind of think of this as more of an overview of some of the supplements that, in my opinion, you should simply avoid and run away as fast as you can. And so this week, I'm feeling very generous. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to name the five biggest waste of money supplements whilst playing a meditative clip for you. Go. A lot of supplements are overplayed in the mainstream fitness industry in terms of how significant they are to you. And again, that you're given this kind of direct causation between a body image or transformation and a specific supplement. And in addition, it does a disservice to those people in the supplement industry who are genuinely honest and analytical and informative and discuss possibly beneficial supplements, but then also discuss certain supplements which are not beneficial. Now, it is fair to say that those people are rare. And although they are rare, these people do exist. For example, Robert Shinetsky, Shinetsky, that rolls off the tongue, Shinetsky. And I will reference him in this video. But then again, we get people like Chris Gethin who makes a video where he suggests that you should stack BCAAs protein powder and essential amino acids together. Hence why I'm making these videos. And instantly, you know, we do have supplements which are well researched and have practical applications such as creatine, uh, a decent protein powder. Now, again, they're not compulsory. Supplements in many cases come down to deficiency and convenience. If you're deficient in a substance, then certain supplements may be essential for you. And also, for example, a protein powder could be highly convenient for you. And so let's start with glutamine for muscle growth and recovery. Essentially, completely useless for you. A waste of your money. Do not buy it. And so glutamine is a conditionally essential amino acid, which means that your body generally has a decent amount of it, except in times of emergency, for example, injury. And that's when it becomes can become more important. And as glutamine is involved with with many functions and mechanisms, mechanisms in the body, for example, the creation of proteins, it's kind of been extrapolated that glutamine is a supplement for muscle growth and recovery. When in actual fact, when we look at the research and we take a deeper look, that is not the case whatsoever. And this myth is further exacerbated by the fact that glutamine is produced in your muscles. So instantly, let's address people who may have suffered injury. Now, there is research to suggest that glutamine is beneficial for people who have suffered some sort of injuries, such as burn victims. However, in those studies, glutamine was applied intravenously, not, not through an oral supplement. Again, that's an intricate detail, but vital detail, which is missed out when people try to push this for injury victims. But then when we look at the most common population of, of people, of humans, who have not suffered extreme injuries, the research shows no benefit whatsoever of glutamine for muscle growth and recovery, yet glutamine is commonly sold for muscle growth and recovery.
it has incredibly low bioavailability. In other words, when you consume glutamine orally, it's not taken up very well by the body. This has to do with the fact that the stomach, liver, and intestines love glutamine. They're greedy. They don't want to share glutamine. And when you consume glutamine supplements, the glutamine passes through all those organs before it has the opportunity to enter your bloodstream and be delivered to your muscles. Essentially, those expensive glutamine supplements are gobbled up by your GI system and never really make it to your muscles. And so why may we see glutamine so commonly? Well, as Shinetsky suggests, glutamine is an incredibly cheap ingredient and a big reason it's used to fill out low quality pre-workouts, amino acid supplements and protein powders. And so to be clear, Research into human participants does not show benefits of glutamine for muscle growth and recovery. And in addition, it has poor bioavailability, in which case it's, it's not going to be effective anyway. You are simply wasting your money and your time. But I have something to admit. I have a slight obsession with branch chain amino acids. It's kind of like what 4% body fat is to Jim or what Photoshop is to Kenny or what 41 pounds of muscle growth in six months is to Vince or what dry muscle is to Vince or what belly fat programs are to Vince. Sorry, this joke is going to take a long time, but it's time to branch out. If you're going to put jokes below, I'm going to steal them and discuss something further about BCAAs. Now, there is research to suggest that BCAAs are beneficial in terms of converting type 2 muscle fibers to type 1 muscle fibers. However, when we do that dangerous thing called reading, we can see that indeed BCAAs are not beneficial in converting type 2 fibers into type 1 muscle fibers. And so this research was done again on the reliable population of rodents, and that is a massive issue. We have rodent studies which are extrapolated to humans, and these supplements are sold based on based on benefits seen in rodent studies, and they just don't translate accurately. And again, that's a massive issue with, with the supplement nonsense. Now, there is a joke in there somewhere about rats and supplement salesmen. And interestingly, and as projected by the brilliant muscle fiber researcher, Dr. Andy Galpin, this is how he sums up this piece of research. That is not evidence-based science. That is selling false certainty. And at this point, I have to add a caveat that there is a massive difference between over-the-counter supplements and under-the-counter supplements if you get my meaning. And so this video is absolutely about over-the-counter supplements that you can buy, you know, in your general supplement stores. And, and the theme that I want you to think about when you're watching this video is the theory of a supplement to its to its practical supplementation or application. The body is a complicated vessel. We can take a supplement and in theory, it, it should work. It sounds like it has a role to play. But then when we actually take these supplements, the body is complicated and, and that supplement does not necessarily work. And so now if I haven't made enough friends in the supplement industry, time to make a few more. Oh, friend, football friend. Oh, best friends forever and ever. Oh, friend. Fat loss supplements. Now I've made videos about fat loss supplements. I will add a caveat to start. There are some fat loss supplements such as Yohimbe, which do have observed effects on the body. However, in any case, I really do not think that these effects are significant and chronic, i.e. long term. When we take a step back from these processes, when we look at things through a more long term lens, when we stop focusing so acutely short term and narrow, have a narrow focus on supplements, for example, and we look at the fat burning process, the fat loss process and all the variables involved, I do not think that fat loss supplements are significant and chronic for your fat loss journey. The other variables of science, the baseline science principles for fat loss, such as caloric deficit, that is what you should focus on. I say this in so many videos, and it might be my new tagline, focus on the work, not the hacks. And again, I've made videos on this, and what I explain is that fat loss happens on a per need basis essentially meaning that your body burns fat when it needs to. And again, this is influenced by the mechanism of thermoregulation. You, you cannot simply hack your fat loss significantly through taking these substances. Yes, they may have some sort of short-term impact on metabolic rate, but your body is smart and intelligent and complicated, and it will overcome this. It is the baseline science principles that you have to integrate. And so I want to say this very clearly on this big microphone. I feel like Michael Buble up here. Focus on the work, not the hacks, and do it consistently. And that is the key 
to being successful. And so do not buy L-carnitine for fat loss. I see so many huge YouTubers promoting L-carnitine for fat loss. Simply the research they're projecting, they haven't read accurately and I've made a video showing and so that. So what is the most significant support of L-carnitine for uh, fat loss? Well, Center et al. 2012 did find a positive relationship between L-carnitine supplementation and fat loss in overweight cats. I do not. And in addition, I'm going to add CLA. And I have to strongly disagree with Alpha M, who actually promotes stacking L-carnitine and CLA together. Conjugated linoleic acid along with L-carnitine. These two products are a fat-burning dynamic duo. Physiology is not easily tricked. That is perhaps the most horrific stacking there could ever be. And so CLA are fatty acids, which are essentially designed to aid in the fat loss process. This is for a variety of reasons. And it is stim-free which is popular amongst people. People want perhaps stim-free fat loss supplements as they are theoretically seen as safer. So that's why these are so popular. However, again, waste of your money. Again, it's a supplement where rodent studies have been extrapolated. But when we do that thing called human studies on humans, which may be beneficial to people, Again, research is contradictory. It's very ambiguous. In no way is it definitive that CLA has any sort of sig significant role in, in fat loss. And to quote Shunetsky again, in fact, a recent study from 2016 conducted by Ribera et al. showed that supplementing with 3.2 grams of CLA per day had no significant effect on endurance, leg fat, trunk fat, or total body fat. We conclude that CLA supplementation associated with aerobic exercise has no effect on body fat reduction and lipid profile. And so speaking very plainly, people who are selling you CLA and L-carnitine for fat loss and a range of other uh, supplements for fat loss are completely misrepresenting research. And in many cases, some of you may say misleading you. Your goal when building muscle or losing fat or, or for a range of other goals is to consistently hammer at those scientific principles of training and nutrition that we know are effective, not to look for the hacks and the little supplements. You are welcome to take supplements. I'm not anti-supplement, but be aware that in most cases they are not necessary or compulsory. They are for deficiency or convenience. And so I'm James Linker. This is the Shredded Sports Science. I will see you soon.